In the spring of 2022, the U.S. Congress had the first big talk about possible contact with aliens in 50 years. We've seen the so-called UFOs many times, but what could extraterrestrial beings look like? You must still think of the aliens as little green men, right? However, astrobiologists claim that extraterrestrial life is, in fact, completely different, and every corner of the universe is teeming with it. In this video, you'll find out what kind of creatures breathe sand, who can survive inside of a neutron star, and most importantly, how animate and dangerous can space actually be. This is Titan, Saturn's moon. There's eternal winter on its surface, with temperatures reaching minus 180 degrees. A human won't last a minute in those conditions, but a silicon-based creature can. This is the most common element in the Earth's crust. We know that carbon is the basis of our planet's life. Similar to it, silicon can form bonds with four other atoms simultaneously, and this means complex compounds that are vital for any form of life. However, here on Earth, silicon bonds are weak. The environment is too hot for them. Meanwhile, on Titan, they could feel right at home. The local cold climate will make organic silicon matter even too stable, to the extent that all the creatures with such body chemistry will be very slow in everything. If there's a silicon-based humanoid race living on Titan right now, then our astronauts will be disappointed in case they want to shake their leader's hand. And brave linguists from a rival would have to hold up that sign for days in a row until the aliens could read at least one single word. That's why silicon-based humanoids will probably find people some ultra-fast superheroes. However, startling differences don't end here. If silicon-based organisms breathe in oxygen, they won't breathe out carbon dioxide like us. Instead, they will exhale sand. I bet you won't feel like inviting them to your clean, cozy house on Titan. But how widespread can this cold life be across the universe? Silicon-based life can comfortably exist on a much greater number of planets than humans, even in billions of worlds. Remember that in our solar system alone, most planets and their moons are colder than Earth. It turns out that the habitable part of our galaxy can be silicon-based with rare carbon-based exceptions. And yet, a lot of scientists question the fact that silicon can be the foundation of complex organisms. In their opinion, even in extreme cold, it's still no match for universal carbon and its properties. These scientists are even labeled carbon chauvinists, though they haven't been canceled so far. And if silicon chemistry seems impossible to them, the following alleged creatures will definitely blow their minds. Here's the scoop. What if some life forms don't need chemistry at all? This neutron star with an unreadable name is the closest to Earth, and it lies at a distance of 400 light years. Its radius is just 14 kilometers, but its mass equals that of our Sun. The matter inside it is so compressed that the regular atoms have broken apart, leaving behind only neutrons, electromagnetic interaction that lets carbon bond with everything you can think of on Earth doesn't work there. When it comes to a neutron star, we deal with the strong nuclear force. It's very short-ranged and affects only subatomic particles. Some scientists believe there might be a whole other world at the neutron star micro level, as in theory, strong interaction can bond compressed particles into complex structures, just like electromagnetism does on Earth. In such high-energy life that neutron creatures might be living will run millions of times faster than ours. If we try to get in touch with them, thousands of generations would come and go in a neutron world during the time we'd spend saying our first hello. This time, we're going to be the ones unable to shake an extended hand. Besides, I doubt that neutron creatures would even believe we're real, since our electromagnetic
electromagnetic chemistry would seem an absurd theory to them. Not to mention that their population would significantly exceed that of carbon-based beings. Even though there are a thousand times fewer neutron stars than regular ones, the Milky Way alone has at least a few hundred million of them. We just can't see most of these bodies. At the same time, apart from deadly cold planets and ultra-dense stars, there's still Earth-like worlds in our Milky Way. They're pretty rare, but anyway, some astronomers assume that they might be inhabited by carbon-based creatures very similar to us. On the other hand, this could be a complete fallacy. How different could life on a twin of Earth be? Take a look at Kepler 452b, an exoplanet situated 1,400 light years away from Earth. That's an enormously long distance, but scientists spared no effort and did manage to see one thing. This rocky world lies in its star's habitable zone. Kepler 452b resembles our home in so many ways that it's been already dubbed Earth 2.0. But if new cutting-edge telescopes let astronomers discover signs of carbon-based life there, that planet could have a different type of chirality. This property lets organic molecules be identical in composition and structure, but look like a mirror image of each other, like your right and left hands. What does it change? If on Kepler-452b our researchers came across a monster whose chirality goes beyond the norms we're used to, our terrestrial equipment wouldn't recognize it as a living thing. Organic molecules that are left-handed in a human body would be right-handed inside that creature and vice versa. This means that all the sensors produced on Earth are useless. The whole trick is so effective that some organisms use opposite chirality to their advantage even here on our planet. The bacteria causing anthrax has a right-handed protein coat. This tiny detail makes it invisible to our immune system with its left-handed sensors. At the same time, it means that if this monster with untypical body chemistry decides to have a human for lunch, it won't be sated or will get poisoned. That's precisely what was shown in the Mass Effect video games, where the Turians had opposing protein chirality unlike all other species. But what if in the real world it's our Earth-type chirality that's abnormal? Astronomers calculated that there can be up to 300 million Earth's twins throughout the Milky Way, and all of them could be unsuitable for humans because of opposite chirality. And what if all other parts of the universe are packed with creatures able to ruin our fundamental ideas about life as it is? Who may inhabit those far reaches of the universe we consider hostile and barren? This is the asteroid belt, just a bunch of rocks left after the formation of stars and planets. We can come across them in absolutely any star system. Asteroids contain a lot of useful resources, including carbon and various metals like iron. We surely wouldn't mind taking them for ourselves, but certain living space machines may extract them sooner. American mathematician John von Neumann pioneered the idea of self-replicating robots. According to his theory, if we teach machines to develop and create their own copies, they will be no different from biological life forms, except for surprising vitality vitality and terrifying appetite. Scientists call these robots von Neumann probes. Their task is to arrive at a location, find any resources, and start replicating so that the following generation could move farther in space. Such an army of teeny piranha robots could colonize the entire Milky Way in some half a million years. And what if another civilization has already launched them? In this case, most free-floating asteroids have long become raw materials used to produce living probes. And if we ever get to see von Neumann's alien machines, that's a signal that we're all doomed. I don't know about you, but I have no idea how to explain to them that humans aren't just biomass they can use for their endless self-replication. If all this is true, those who've been dreaming of finding life in the universe will finally get what they craved. Outer space will suddenly become much livelier, but at a price. It will also be lethally dangerous. But what if I told you that other life forms already exist right here on YouTube? 
Some philosophers claim that our thoughts and words are also material. Some of them get energy from nerve impulses sent by our brain, evolve, and self-reproduce through communication. For example, with the help of YouTube comments. So tell us what form of life has surprised you the most. Only make sure that no one's spying on you, because you might create new unique beings while typing. And that's quite an intimate process. Also, check out this video and find out the real reason why NASA sent the Voyager Golden Record into space.